Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Zowie NA Open. This is semifinal number two, and it's actually going to be our first Protoss versus Terran of the evening, uh, at least on this stream. And spawning in the upper left of Echelon Waste, playing for Clarity Gaming, he is the green Protoss Shu. And his opponent in the lower right, the blue Terran Rico. And I, I wanted to say a team there, but I realized there was no team, so that's why I hesitated and sounded weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, so she used to be on Quantic, apparently, a long time ago at least, what she said. So, she's going to be the first Terran that's up in uh, this tournament that I made with the cast. So happy. And she will be placed in that supply depot uh, in a very good location. It's pretty much just to be there for that proxy location. It's so far away that it's not like the, you know, some people put it as fast as possible down, but it's not the front either. So that's that's simply for the proxy location. Shu, though, uh, would you say that he's typically cheesy? Shu, I would say no. I'm more familiar, actually, with every matchup except this one. PvZ and PvP actually you know, took a couple boats from him back in the day. PV, or PvZ and PvP, I should say. PvT, though, I didn't watch as closely as I could have. But overall, doesn't strike me as a, a, a cheesy player, no. Um, from what I've seen from him, especially on this map, he's definitely an early third type player. I, I wouldn't actually be surprised to see him take a fast third versus Terran, which is... It's always risky. Taking a third before a Terran takes a third. It doesn't always work out great for Protoss players, but Shu is, is someone who would. And plus it's on Aquilon, so why uh, why not? It's going to be the uh, best map for it if you're going to do it. We see a poop down here. Could just be waiting uh, and go in a little bit later, potentially after the Reaper has already left the base, since Reaper openers are kind of what you do in TVP. But no, Ooh. places a pylon. This is a very early pylon for just some aggression. This is definitely going to be something. And, you know, it's in a location where I'd say it probably is not going to be Twilight Council uh, or, you know, Dark Shrine, but rather Stargate. Because it's, I don't know, it's just so, you know, easy to get to and destroy, and usually you don't want that when you uh, put two tech buildings down. Yeah, I'm going to have to agree with you there. And, well, the thing is, this pile is so early. It's so, so, so early that Rico should be on top of this. I mean, yeah. all she has to do is look around and be like, you don't have a second pylon in your base? What the hell are you doing? Um, usually you'll see the third pylon is the one that's used for proxies. So Rico should have a pretty good heads up on this. What if it's like a fake, man? What if he's oh, got so that in her mind and is not going to do so anything bad. with it? But it's not. It's going to be that 5.30 Oracle, uh, the earliest Oracle, 5-minute Oracle, uh, and it's going to be really, really, really scary. Uh, but Rico's already on it. In fact, she's engineering blocking the natural because you can, first of all, no zealot, no problem. And second of all, if you know it's an Oracle, you just go back in there, you finish it, and you build a turret in the main. It's so useful. So true. This is going to be the most useful proxy building that uh, Rico could possibly build. And, well, the Reaper going to scout around looking for the proxy Stargate. Does not see it over there, but, you know, bunker on the top of the ramp. Rico's going to have this locked down, but really what you got to worry about with a proxy Oracle is your mineral line. The bunker on the top of the ramp won't help you so much. And we do see mm. the Oracle. As you said, the fastest Oracle possible gets started actually before five minutes here. He is, he's just got one stalker Shu has out, which will deny this Reaper. Not before it manages to pick off a probe, but yeah, the Reaper gets in and confirms, hey, there's nothing in this base. And at this point, you really just do assume proxy Stargate. She's not going back to finish it, though. In fact, she's scouting for it, and she's going to finally know. SCV, don't stop. Go find it. Going to go and find it and confirm. Really, at this point, you should know, honestly. Uh, so it's problematic that her engineer be fit, uh, Bay is not finished. She only has four Marines, and Oracle can take on four Marines. She needs to pull and wait for the six Marines, as well as the Widow Mine, and that is what she's going to be using. Unfortunately, that means that she can't be offensive with it, or the Oracle will just come back in and deal more damage, and you really want to be offensive with a one base Widow Mine drop. Yeah, you're not there to really protect against the Oracle, although it's what it will help you do. Uh, Oracle out of energy now going to retreat. Overall probe kill, five, but we have a Widow Mine in position, which, of course, uh, will one-shot an Oracle, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 160 mm -hmm. damage shots, so we'll take it down in one fell swoop. Oh, she was actually following up with a Void Ray here, adding two more gates in his main, and, oh, is Rico going to see oh, this? No. The, the Reaper does see one more gateway. All right, so this is very all-in from Shu, and... Is it going to do the work? Dash, she didn't see both. 
Oh, well, okay, so there's no Nexus. Obviously, she knows that because of the Engineer Bay, so she knows that something's going to be following it up. If he does kill the Engineer Bay now and takes the Nexus, it's going to be so late. Uh, it's probably not going to be what it is. Um, just, like, at this point, it's just so late that you're probably kind of forced into doing it all in rather than trying to kill it. So Rico has to be so careful. Sometimes it's actually the better move to do the counterattack, uh, but a lot of times I'll just see them put the bunkers down, uh, hole up, and try and get the command center down. Uh, I don't think she saw that void ray just barely. Maybe. No. 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 Void ray not confirmed. Rico, 11 marines out right now. No additional bunkers. Just has the one at the front. No additional unit production, though. Uh, command center does go down. Adding on a second barracks now. Um, and, oh, actually going for a counter drop. This... Yeah. This, could, this could actually be bad, because uh, Shu is going to be coming up here with these units. The only thing going in Rico's favor is how late the warp gate is, and wow, Shu was actually laying down a nexus behind this? That mm -hmm. is something I did not expect, but I guess with how late uh, Rico's command center is, he feels okay with it, and based off that, this counter drop can actually do quite a bit. Oh, what am I? No, what are you doing? Oh. Oh. Probably didn't expect to see those two voidries down there. If it was just the stalkers, maybe it would have burrowed, but needs to be careful with the oracle again. That is, uh, Shu needs to be so careful. It cannot take on that many marines. The drop is gonna go, uh, is gonna go. If Shu was all inning right now, it's all gonna be happening, and it would have, you know, might have been a trade, but right now, Shu is, it's not gonna be a trade. Rico's gonna do damage, or at least stop mining, and Shu might feel compelled to try and break through the front to deal some return damage. Oh, wait, no, the Widow Mines didn't come with that. Never mind. No, oh. just Marines. Shu does not have enough for a photon overcharge here. Now he sees the drop going into his main. What is he going to do about it? Warps in two stalkers back at home, which are not going to be enough to deal with these Marines with Medivac support. He's going to try to target down the Medivac, probably. But luckily for him, these Marines don't have stim or anything. Uh, oh, the Mothership Core uh, could go down. No, just needs to buy 19 <laughs> more seconds worth of energy time. But the Oracle coming in to defend here as uh -oh, well actually nope, could make nope. it happen. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that wasn't even a full health Oracle. That wouldn't have done anything. And the medevac does help extremely, extremely well. In fact, he should be targeting the medevac uh, at this point. Oh, no, no, the mothership core! That was so, so important. Um, but it actually still forces the pickup. Didn't have to, but it did. And now the natural's under attack. Uh, unfortunately, Rico still doesn't have her own command center. She's being contained, so she needs to do a, a lot more probe damage. Oh, she did not put an SCV back on that command center Ooh, after it got yeah. picked off by the Oracle. That could have been long done by now. Um, that's unfortunate, but the drop going to get knocked away, not going to get picked off here. Oh, just a couple shots, though, meaning that it cannot go back in. Poor Marine, he got evacuated. I don't know if there wasn't enough food on the ship. They're like, all right, you're gone. Sorry, Billy. Billy number two, I should say. Billy died on the uh, WCS stream, but... <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this, this uh, medevac is going to have to leave, but we have another drop coming in. Seven Marines going back into the main. Oh, uh, well, it's currently six to eight workers killed in favor of Rico. She's only down by five SCVs. Uh, only one mule, though, so that's, I think, exactly even. <laughs> uh, with the second command center, if it was already done, of course, two mules, she would probably be ahead. But Shu, he needs to defend this, uh, you know, constant drops with no mothership core, and that's going to be a little difficult. Uh, it's so easy when there's two just to have one army one place and another score the other place, but now you got to split up your army perfectly, and it's so hard to do. In fact, the forge is dealt. It's going to go down. It's going to go down. It's dead. There is no plus one for you. Oh, yep. It's going to get it, and she is also going to save three marines there. Another weak in medevac, but so far the trade's going pretty well for Rico. Loses a couple marines in the natural as well. Total um, count 40 probes to 32 SCVs with... Uh, no mule active at this point. Looks like um, d is capable of dropping two, soon to be three, uh, off of these orbital commands. So economic deficit not too bad for Rico, honestly, especially since she keeps getting these kills. And now she can officially lock down her natural too. So uh, the game can even out from here. The marine count is really high. There's a good standing army for Rico, whereas Shu like has a couple of stalkers and no tech. There's a robo facility. Robotic space on the way. So he's not in the Stone Age or anything. This game is just maybe four minutes behind where it really should be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good way to put it. You know, it's, this would be uh, like an eight minute, well, more like 9.30 because the medevacs are out, but uh, time and instead it's 12.40. And Bay's going to go down. It's going to have plus one ahead of his, uh, her opponents just because she took out that forge. That's a really nice kill. In fact, it's not even being remade. That is a robotics bay going up to Colossus, which is going to be really, really good against the mostly marine composition that she has, only mixing a few marauders here and there. The observer is not going to get sniped, but it is moved away far enough that I believe it missed the drop off to the right. Yeah, that is just going to sneak by there, and the Proxy Stargate is going to be taken down here wow. by Rico. Scary, Finally. Scary. Void Rays. Oh, void rays. Rays. oh they are going to murder this medevac. Rico needs <laughs> amazing reaction time, because if these things prismatic align, that, that, that's just gone. It's going to be like it never existed in the first place. 
Uh, I was gonna make a Wheel of Time joke, but you and the 40 viewers probably would not get it. Probably not. Oh, she just boosts in! She only met one of them. If she met two, that would have been dead, but only one, not nearly as scary. The Militia Core is there. Activates the cannon. It is, uh, probably should target the medevac. Oh god, yeah. oh god, the wood mines. Get out of there, shoot! Oh, oh that could have been horrible, <laughs> but, uh, wood mines are there. Where's the detection? The observer is across the map? Wait, wait, there's a yes, second observer. Yes, it's is across it? the map. There's one, okay, there's, there's one in the main that goes for it. A lot of damage on the Void Ray. The Force Fields plus the Colossus is enough to keep Rico off, and it's a very typical looking game right now. This is, like, so typical, it's scary. Um, <laughs> the, the third is kind of late. At uh, the same time as the additional two barracks and the command, the combat shows aren't even done. So she was really not looking to push in there. Uh, probably not even expecting that she could, but you know, why not? I was going to be active as a Terran. I was going to keep the Pearls a little bit scared. And Shu, to make up for that lost plus one, goes for the double forge. So she, uh, Shu will be actually uh, ahead very, very soon, especially if Chronos those upgrades. Yeah, there will be a pretty big window here where the plus one is done, the combat shields are done, and there's a good number of medevacs on the field. Actually, no, there's only two. I actually thought uh, there were going to be four or six at this point. A couple of them, I guess, got picked off in those drops. So, no, there's not the most aggressive potential there for Rico. She's going to back off. Shu going to knock down these rocks. Going to go ahead and take a third. And, yeah, like you said, this game is, <laughs> you know, it's it's so standard. It's it's weird. It's weird how it got to this exact point. If I were looking at this game, I would just assume the time was 11 minutes, but it's actually 16 minutes. Um, we do see a second starport coming down here for Rico pretty quickly there, but third base as well, so it's not going to be a two-base mass Viking all-in from Rico or anything like that. Observer of Shu pops in, sees everything it needs to see, and, yeah, for himself, just trying to bring it back. Twilight Council on the way, more Colossus. I still like it for Shu, considering he has two Colossus, three Colossus out, while there are two Vikings on the field, but the second start will help Rico catch up to that. Mm -hmm. Regal's still down by about 10 supply, which is not a position you really want to be in in TVP. You want to be up in supply, generally. Um... But it's not too much of a deficit that a few drops or a good engagement won't overcome. The upgrades are a little bit worrisome. The arm rate will finish, so she's going to start 2-1, um, hopefully very, very soon, to combat shoes. You know, 2-2, two, two, that will be on the way, but she'll uh, probably always be behind. That's just the power of the, you know, believe it or not, upgrades were once uh, buffed for Protoss. <laughs> they used to be so much harder to get. Yeah, they were much more expensive, and you could just, you could just really never bring yourself to start level one shields but now it's much more common and of course every other upgrade got the buff as well so uh, double forge just kind of a staple in pvt at this point even making its way into pvz much more common as well uh but yeah the we have the double ebay for rico so she won't be too far behind there's just serious three three windows where uh protoss can just do so 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 much damage and she does have his templar archives down and ready so if rico were going to pull scvs now would pretty much be the time but this isn't that kind of game. There aren't enough SCVs made because the game started out so weird. So that's one difference, I guess. The uh, work account generally pretty low for 18 minutes, about 61 to 57. Mm. And she's still making SCVs, so you know usually you'd stop and then bring them all. Shu has scanned, and he scanned walking out. So this could be a fake good pull back, or he could decide to go for it. It's so hard to go for it with only one splash, unless it's like a two base hole or something like that. With just you know taking a third behind it, four colossus waiting on a storm. That's usually just a fake. And it is. He pulls back. Rico, she needs to be a little more active on the map, I'd say. Um, you know, very defensive because she is a little bit behind. Um, and she has no Ghost Academy, which she really needs to get. Typically, it'd be at the 15-minute mark where I'd say have both. But now it's at the 19-minute mark <laughs> where you need both. But you really need to start thinking about it. Yeah, at this point, you know, there's just certain timing. And even though this game is delayed, this is about the time where you realize your Protoss opponent is going to have both splashes out, the Templar and the Colossi. So you want to combat that in kind there. Ghost Academy does go down over in the natural. Uh, but Storm, has Storm finished? Yeah, Storm is finished for Shu. And there's quite a few Templar on the field right now. Uh, four. That's a lot of Storms with this army. So Rico is not in a position to be aggressive, possibly waiting for, you know, the plus two to finish for an aggressive push. But if she does, she's probably going to end up, you know, kind of in a bad situation. One thing to note is that there's no charge for Shu. He did get Blink, which is much more common to get first now in PvT, just to deal with Vikings, deal with boosted medevacs. Um, you know, Ooh. Colossus Blink Stalker is so common. Ooh. How did she Don't know that War Prism was over there? Because the Vikings are going straight for it. They know it's coming, and they are spread out. But so is Shu. His plan was to attack the War Prism in the main and go out uh, in the front. Uh, it's kind of, you know, haphazard now. This might work out for either player. I don't know. It's, it's been... Oh, no, actually, both armies are uh, collected, but 
No ghosts. Uh, the fourth is not canceled, it's taken down, but she needs to do a lot of damage with this Marauder drop if she hopes to win this game because that army is so scary. So many storms have to have perfect splits. In fact, she may want to start thinking about throwing down as many bunkers as possible, but no, Shu! Shu, why are you scared? You have so many storms. Don't be scared. Oh, okay. Don't Just be wait scared, out there. it's all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, probably a little bit preoccupied with this drop in his main, splitting his attention, wants to warp some units back there. Mostly stalkers, unfortunately. Gonna get uh, pretty destroyed by the Marauders, but there, now it's been cleaned up. Shu can uh -oh. focus his full energy on this deck. Oh, that is a great angle for uh -oh. those Vikings. Does wow. not get the second Colossus, though. That is so many Vikings here. 16 Vikings, and a couple of them just got picked off, so she was up in the 18-20 range. So if this, you know, is to end up perfectly for her, as she gets the ghosts out, and they're just now about to pop out, with not with Mobius Tractor, actually half of them have Mobius Tractor, half of them don't. She needs to sacrifice the Vikings on top of the Colossus, put the Colossus down uh, ASAP, and then only deal with one splash. That is, like, the best option, or, like, Blink and EMPs, which are also really, really good. But either one would really help her in this very tight spot that she's in. Shu getting once again that fourth. No map presence uh, for Rico. She's really just all in the defensive. Wow, really nice concave for her. Shu does need to be careful this time because he notices, well, hey, you have ghosts now. It's no longer just storms against no ghosts. Yeah, he can't be as willy-nilly with this aggression. If he walks in too far, he might get EMP, blinks out, and this is really the best spot for Rico to engage Shu because he's going to get funneled in. And she's going to be able to get good Viking shots as well as really, really good EMPs. So she's got to be careful about how he pushes in. And he may have just waited too long. He may have given his opponent just too much time to get these ghosts out. He's, you know, kind of quote-unquote containing her on three bases. But if the if the Terran army gets good EMPs, uh -oh. the army could just die. Okay, that was a little scary. I don't think he should push up now because there are EMPs. It's not, you know, the overwhelming amount of ghosts, like 10. That would be super, super scary. But it's still scary. Even five is still scary. Loads up a double drop because she's figured, well, he's not going to push in. It's just a little too scary. And is, uh, that's definitely a, a good option here. Need to remember that those Vikings are over there. If she forgets those in an engagement, it's going to be, uh, it's going to kind of suck. But Shu will disengage. Three threes about the finish for him. Rico will only be on uh, three two in uh, about a minute, actually. But Shu is also getting a fifth base. It's really come to a point where Rico's not going to win the game here unless maybe she pulls SCVs. So she might want to start thinking about, like, Throwing on my extra command centers, getting like all the upgrades possible, and going into the late, late game. Yeah, needs to get in there because, you know, at this point, as you said, it's going to be three bases to five. Uh, well, this Nexus is going to get denied here by this double drop, but still, Shu just has this economic advantage. He's got everything a Protoss wants. He's getting Warp Prism speed, he's getting plus one shields, which means, you know, the Protoss is just at a point where he's like, all right, you can't kill me. I maybe can't kill you. It's a little too risky, so I'm just going to sh make sure that I can win in five minutes. And, yeah, I mean, that's probably going to happen for Shu. There, we do see a fourth coming down for Rico, which Shu is right on top of there, so he knows there probably isn't an SCV pull coming at this point. So he's comfortable being out here on the map. And he's just going to continue to control the front of Rico's base, maybe even pick off this fourth command center. With 3-3 done, he's going to go for it. Oh, she's outside the concave. She wants to get a fourth, which is kind of forced to be out like this. But look at that army. The ground army's kind of pitiful. It's mostly Vikings and ghosts, but not like... You know, 20 ghosts you might see in a late, late game. She needs more, but the the drops have all taken it. This is a perfect opportunity for Shu, and he's going to go in. The storms, they're trailing behind. That may be a good thing, because all the ghosts might die before they catch up. Oh, my God, that's, those storms are on Shu's army more than the Vikings. <laughs> yeah, Shu's sacrificing uh, you know, a lot of damage there to take down these Vikings, which, uh, well, with all his Colossus dead, maybe not the thing he needed to do, but as you said, most of Rico's ground army is in these drops. Shu is trying to charge up here. There's just so many storms left. There's going to be some good EMPs on this ramp, but ghosts do not fare well one-on-one -on -one right now. Well, she scans, takes out the Observer, and hopes to go by with cloaked ghosts, but the storms are still there, so as long as they don't get sniped, they can storm on top of the cloaked ghosts and kill them that way. That's exactly what's happening. No EMP, and uh, she has those drops. One of them is going, but no, that is not going to work out. Here we go, GG's, and Shu takes the game. Admittedly, he had a little bit of a lead, but he really just rolled with it. He was able to, you know, really power through. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very true. You know, Rico just stayed on three base for a little bit too long. Shu probably had a you know a role to play in that. He was outside her base with that army for s just the longest time. But yeah, I mean the ghosts were a little late, allowing Shu to get into that position. Everything was just a little bit off for Rico, unfortunately. Mhm. Mm uh, she also I say she stayed on too few bases too long. Like she stayed on one base for too long. She had two base for too long. She stayed on three base for too long. Kind of unfortunate. Yeah, truth.
That is the truth right there. And now uh, Rico is going to choose Frost as her map here. Um, you know, Frost, notably a four spawn map, which uh, there aren't many currently. It's just Frost and Whirlwind. Am I wrong? Are there other ones? Wow, the Whirlwind's that's... leaving soon. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's weird. That is weird. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see what Rico plans to do here. You know, the nice thing about this map is you're probably not going to get proxy stargated. Doesn't mean you won't. A lot of people will just be like, all right, I'm going to proxy it on the 33% chance that it's near you. Either way, oracles are pretty fast. But uh, Shu probably not going to play the same card twice in this case. And we'll see what Rico likes to do with Frost here. Um, I like this map for Terran. Uh, drops can be really, really good against a Protoss attempting to take a third really anywhere. And a more mobile army is a better army on Frost. <clears throat> But uh, we are spawning in here <clears throat> in the upper right. Game playing post. for Clarity Gaming. Going to request a pause, but we'll intro him anyway. He is uh, hes the green Protoss player. He is Shu. And it's going to be cross spawns here on Frost as well. So I'm sure Rico's probably pretty happy about that. Uh, with a warp in mechanic, it doesn't usually mean so much against Protoss, but still. You just generally feel more comfortable. My cat is stealing my watch. <laughs> Quit it. This cat has ulterior motives. He just wants to know what time it is, yo. Oh, God. He, uh, he's a bobtail, and they're like ferrets. They'll like hoard stuff and steal stuff. <sighs> <laughs> the magpies of the ground. It's going to make a sweet nest, I bet. You go ahead and take cat, it. Cats, yeah, cats do that, right? They make nests, right? No. Uh, <laughs> Good guess, though. <laughs> yeah, that's what I guess. Mammals, nests, standard. But <laughs> spawning in the lower left, currently down 0-1 in this best of three semifinal. She is the blue Terran player, Rico. And as I believe Kern is showing us there, the Christmas tree. Frost is the map with the Christmas tree. If you guys don't know, Ooh. there is just holiday spirit all over. Also, in the middle, below the Zilnaga, in that little ravine, if we could see it a little farther down, a little farther down, there's a carrier that has crashed. There it is. That is a carrier. Oh. It is the uh, Protoss, like, capital carrier, you know, with that chip, the special one. <laughs> was it, what, uh, it's Tacitar it's ship? Scratched. Was this where the Overmind was? <gasps> no, not the Tacitar oh. ship. It's the, uh, like, the Adjutant? The, no, no, that's Terran. The Adjutant. Damn, I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, I, can't, I only like, remember the hero mothership. She was a chick. She gets a, it's a carrier. I don't know. She comes in when like the world is dying, I think, and she's like, "Hey, you need some carriers." And I'm like, "Dear God, please, yes." And you die anyways because that's the whole point. Yeah, oh, so, that girl, Solendis. Right. I think that's Solendis. Yeah, maybe. Um, I thought she had. I'm thinking of the campaign mission where you like had to stop them from murdering all the. Civilians yeah, there's or... also that chick. Yeah, she's, she's, uh... that's the same one. She had like a hero mothership or something. It had a purifier beam. Two to three head Perdas chicks, I think. Yeah, there's Rajagal. Did she die in Broodwire? I don't remember. I don't think she did. I don't remember. <laughs> she got no. She got she got like possessed by Kerrigan or something. Not possessed, but like brainwashed. Yeah, and then lots of bad things happen. It's bad news. They're called something though. They're called like Justicar. Nope, that's that's Mass Effect. Damn it! So close. They're both. Damn, I'm so close. I'm so close. They're like jid, jid something, and I I can't <laughs> think of it right now. But whatever. My game's mixed up. Uh, both players are scouting each other. They're um, they're very intense on each other. Sometimes you see one player just not care that much because like eventually, and it's such a big map that if your opponent scouts you, not a big deal. But they both are pretty keen on it. Yeah, I see. I see it a lot from Protoss players. Just like, okay, I'll get an early sentry and I'll just hallucinate and scout you. But it's also nice to see whether or not your opponent's taking gas, which uh, Rico has. Actually, has a a good amount of gas here. It's gonna go for double Reaper. I was thinking maybe it was gonna be factory, but no, double Reaper. Is Shu gonna expect that? Saw the reactor finish, but I don't see he saw the barracks go into production, um, which would you know be a dead giveaway on the double That's Reaper. But he's prepared for it. Gonna Chrono boost out a Stalker. Probably gonna Chrono boost out a second one too. Although he might be comfortable with just the Mothership Core. Once again, Jimmy Block, this is something that has gone so out of style. Like, it used to be so popular, but then uh, people learned about the fake zealot, which is so Imba. Uh, <laughs> but now she is just getting away with it all the time. I mean, I get away with it all the time on the ladder, but I am Chogo. <laughs> and so are my T and my uh, opponents. But, um, oh, a hidden Twilight Council. The Reapers are going to scout this, though, so unfortunate for Shu. Very unfortunate. 
They should scout it. I, I could see them not scouting it, just because it's not really on their escape path. I mean, it, it kind of is. No, no, they can't shut down there. That's a double cliff. So maybe if Rico's not on top of it, um, she might. That might slip by her view. But you know, if they don't, that's definitely her mistake. Mm -hmm. Generally, what's happened, uh, you know, is that they go up there, they run around, you know, literally run around the base. So that's why I think they should see it, but. Uh, oh, oh my yeah, god. Okay, okay here we go. Uh, and <laughs> she also sees it, like, you know, working, so she knows that uh, Dark Shrine's probably not going to follow up. Although, technically, I guess you could cancel Blink and go for it since, hey, it's already been scouted, so why not change it up? But Shu, he's not going to be able to surprise her with, like, a, you know, 348 Blink all in, which would be a very big surprise in this map, and an even bigger surprise if you don't scout it. Probably going to happen now. Yeah, true. Uh, Blink Ollens are so powerful, though. Like, even when they're scouted, Terrans just have such trouble dealing with them. Especially you know on... Tell me why. Because they're Ember. Oh, is that, is that why? I Hashtag Protoss. I flipped eight Blink Ollens. I flipped <laughs> eight Blink Ollens. We're going to see the Rage of Zombie on this game, I think. Because Shu... <laughs> oh, he's going up three gates. Not necessarily an all-in. Uh, Mushroom Core going to be coming out now. Mm -hmm. But... I, it, I like mm -hmm. it on this map. I expect him just to like warp in maybe two warp ins, maybe not even, kind of like a fake, and then expand behind it simply because it's yeah. been scouted and it's only three gateways. Uh, on the flip side, Rico, she doesn't know that he's going to fake it. She can never be sure, and she shouldn't ever be sure because there's always a chance the pros will say, hey, you're really undefended. Let me invest everything into it, anyways. So getting a tank out, tanks, um, I don't know, they're kind of deceiving, right? Like, they're good, technically, but if they get blinked upon, then they're absolutely useless. You really want not only tanks, but a lot of other stuff with it, too. Yeah, you need to make the Protoss scared to blink on your tank. And not only that, you just need to have good positioning with it. Now, she is going to see three Stalkers come across the map. We have a couple more getting warped in here. Total of five, six on the map right now. Uh, she'll probably go up to eight, maybe. If it's only six, he's this is really, really light pressure. But eight is enough where, I mean, you could try to pick off Stim if that were even a thing right now, but it's not because the tech lab is on the factory. Um, Rico just going into full defense mode, and it could be an overreaction. But as you said, you know, she has no way of knowing. Well, that being said, there's actually two Reapers, so she has an exact way of knowing, and she sees there's <laughs> only three gateways. So she's going to double check that probably, but if she's actually making a third tank, I think she may have already overreacted, even if it wasn't. Yeah, not necessarily if it wasn't all in, but three tanks is a lot. Uh, actually, I think it is an overreaction, even if it wasn't all in. Uh, there's really a fine line between, like, um, right, this aggression shouldn't do a whole lot, so. Well, if it is, we'll keep on top of it, but, um, especially with that tank shell. But there's a fine line between, like, good players and really good players and really good players with, like, professional gamers. And a lot of that line comes down to, like, all in defense and aggression defense, where. The lesser players will over defend and will never push out, and they just get behind like economically, which is something I always have a pitfall into. And she might also be falling into the same pitfall, um, especially on this map where those tanks are not going to be countering. You know, it's it's far too large of a map. Yeah, well, she is really locking it down here. That is a fourth tank on the way, and <laughs> yeah, I mean, she clearly expects a four get all in. Um, at this point, she did scout the entire base of the Reaper, so this, this just isn't the proper reaction from Rico. And if Shu could see the amount of tanks on the high ground there, I mean, he sees the second one, or at least he guarantees at least two tanks there. He picked off a couple supply depots, a bunker, he's containing his opponent. I'm sure he's pretty happy right now. He's actually following up with a Dark Shrine, which is, uh, I don't know, because, I mean, you keep your opponent on two base for this long, they're not going to be dropping all their mules in their main. Uh, it shouldn't do too much, but it can definitely help for the contain. It's not a bad thing. She's already so far behind, it's kind of sad. There's like the worst ways to lose games, seriously. Like you're like, okay, he's gonna all in, I'll just, I'll defense it and then I win. And then you defend it, but you lose in the long game anyways. And you're like, Protoss, Imba, that's why. Uh, but the truth is, is that she hasn't taken her second. She has no stim. She has medivacs, but without stim at this stage, there's just gonna be like, they're not gonna be very useful drops. Uh, she has tanks, which aren't gonna be useful. And then a big gas investment, so the upgrades are also late. Uh, and they're, you know, medevacs aren't a plenty, so everything's kind of going wrong for Rico. Even though it looks like she is safe, it's uh, deceiving safe. Yeah, it's it's over safe. It's uh, you know, it's like sheltered safe, like that person who, like, hasn't heard of certain bands because their parents didn't. Oh, I don't know, let them out of the house yeah. in high school. It's, just, it's uh, it's the it, uh, it's a tough place to be in. It's the parents that wrap you in like five layers when it snows. It's the parents that don't let really you play Pokemon because it's animal abuse, which I had a friend like that. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> they don't let you read Harry Potter because it's, it's witchcraft. Exactly. That, too. That, too. 
Uh, my friends actually, her parents are so cool, but they were just surprisingly strict about that. <laughs> like it was weird. <laughs> but they're they're both parents, and it's not a good thing. Your your children become all weird and they need therapy, and it's not good. Yeah, you have children who are getting stim at eleven thirty. It's just it's not where you want to be. <laughs> As, as a parent, as a parent of a Terran, no. And it's like, well, this is why my child ended up a criminal and in the Terran military. Because I, I did not raise him well, it's my fault. Now, we're going to see Rico. Eight Marine drop up into the main was awesome when she was proxying, but now that she was open to Blink Stalkers, it's probably going to get denied pretty hard. Does have potential to do some damage, though. Has a potential. Much low potential. Stem so far away. Just now starting to build Marauders. Starting to get an army that's actually good. You know, because tanks aren't that good in PvT, <laughs> uh, no matter what other people might try and proclaim a Willow, I'm going to you. Uh, but it's, they're really not, especially if they're not like a, a two base all in or one base all in where you can contain your opponent. This is not a map for that, so relatively useless. And Shu is going to have a, probably an easy time really in this game, unless Rico can really surprise him somehow. Yeah, Rico has to rally. Like,. <laughs> Maybe a Doom Drop with tanks, that'd be kind of cool. Like, it's TBT, but it's not. Because uh, <laughs> it's hard to approach the Colossus. You do see the drop over the main. Behind the Twilight Council, which would be cool if it was a Zealot-based army, but it's not. So, the Blink Stalker is going to Blinkify their way to victory. And the Medivac maybe might barely survive, but obviously Shu could probably Blink on top of it. Oh, <laughs> no. Gets out of there. The Stalkers going to be trapped. Oh, wow. These Stalkers actually folded on top of each other. It's like Origami Stalkers. <laughs> um, she is pushing out because this is the best option he, she has with the army she has, so maybe this could do something. In fact, it just might be able to, but it's such a long walk that Shu can continually poke forward with those Blink Stalkers, poke out, you know, like uh, like you do versus, you know, Zerg versus Terran, and Mech versus Mech, or whatever you want, but... Oh, okay, that Stalker was doomed <laughs> into the void you go. But Shu, are you getting another Twilight Council? Why? Why That's not? not? <laughs> this is right. yeah. It's, it's 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 because it's on the cusp of his upgrades finishing. I wonder if he'll cancel it once he tries to start plus two. Uh, we'll see. Right now he's going to be preoccupied with this army coming up the front. Oh, tanks almost get some shots off. Not quite though. Tanks so close to being useful right now. But three <laughs> colossus. I mean, obviously Shu's army is just superior, but really good tank positioning can change a lot. Yeah, well, he's going to go for it. There's no charge. Charge. Oh, the charge just finished. So there you go. Charge decimates tanks like no one's business. And that is it for Rico's army. Um, that might be it for her game as well. Shu can counterattack if he does. That's, uh, that's up to him. Could be a little too scared. Oh, yeah, well, oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, that is unfortunate for Rico. And I just want to point out that second Twilight Council did finish. So that, <laughs> that did happen. Confirmed, but yeah, this counterattack is probably going to be game ending. Uh, you know, Rico obviously did not keep making tanks because you don't want to do that, so she doesn't have them as good as they could be defensively. They all died out there in the field, and she was just going to go for it. These three Colossus are alive. There's two Vikings. These Colossus could almost kill these Vikings. That's how bad the ratio is. But yeah, she should pretty much be able to end it here. She shouldn't really have a problem. The Colossus, like, raise up one leg and, like, stick, like, stick it like a skewer it that's the word i'm looking for <laughs> that'd be hilarious also like it's just, uh, exactly and it's like walking with it and it's like get off like cats with tape <laughs> on their paws oh god <laughs> uh dropping a lot of analogies in this cast i like it I like it a lot oh she's actually gonna back off here well he is playing it safe that's for sure uh dropping the natural by the way did get knocked away by the photon overcharge didn't really do anything uh, work account right now 55 to 41 in favor of the protoss player which two mules is not going to even up, unfortunately, for Rico. And now she's getting, you know, the army that you need, but, I mean, she's going to have 1-0 when her opponent has 2-2 two -two in about 30, no, like 20 seconds. If she was being aggressive, I feel like he could have ended it by now, but he's playing it safe. You really can't blame him for that. I can blame him a little bit. He's already <laughs> up 1-0. third, actually, which is uh, interesting. He's like, okay, does Rico have a third somewhere? She can't be this far behind, but no, she is. Unfortunately, those tanks not doing what they could have. Going to pick off a proxy pylon over uh, at her third, as well as uh, at the top of her potential fourth. But Shu was just probably waiting for Storm there. Getting 3-3 three, three on the way, but this factory is just uh, looking for a home. <laughs> I thought it was a command center. I was like, oh, she does have a third. No, it's just a factory. Lonely factory. Never gets used in TVP anymore. It had its heyday before Hellbats were nerfed. Oh well, 
<laughs> it's gonna be a scout. Very expensive scout. Warp prism's here. It's gonna warp in a DT. Just one DT. Because why not? Another one is also warped in. So these can do extra DPS, like a lot of extra DPS if it is in the army and they don't recognize it. Or it can go into the main and force it to draw back and attack and all the good stuff that you, uh, you've seen in StarCraft since, well, since like 2000, honestly. Rude war. <laughs> Yeah, DT drops. This is the scariest thing that could pretty much ever happen to you. Uh, now, Rico's not sure, you know, how to engage this. Um, Viking count is decent. It's four Colossi and nine Vikings. Not exactly what you want, but it could certainly be a lot worse. With some good shots, uh, Rico can probably scarce you a little bit. But we also have four Templars, oh, which will soon have a total of eight storms between them. And that's a lot of potential damage there. And these these scans just keep barely missing the army. That's like the second one where she was just hanging out on the edge. Oh, and the GTs are in the main. Which <laughs> oh, two, so combat shield doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, this whole entire army is just so scary. I don't know why Shu. I don't know why you're scared, Shu. I really don't. I guess he's winning for the storms because the storms in that position are going to be so perfect. They're going to get everything. Do it. There you go. Up on the ramp would also be really really great. Oh, and he's still being so cautious. Oh, Vikings. Oh, no high ground vision. There's the storm. Gonna get a lot of these Vikings, and well, Rico's just playing as defensive as she possibly can. These Templar are gonna storm this mineral, and there we go. That's most of the bio there. That is gonna go down. The Vikings doing what they can, but they're so weak. The Stalker's gonna quickly pick off the Pumpkin Vikings, and that's gonna be a GG. Shu is gonna take a 2-0 and advance to the finals against Arthur. It's gonna be a PvP final. More Arthur PvP. Man. Man, oh man. Well, that's probably going to go in Arthur's favor. He's been showing a lot of awesome man, oh man, PvP. Oh, Arthur's had some damn good PvP. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure Shu is a little scared. Uh, nonetheless, he'll be guaranteed a prize, so that's cool. Yeah, Shu guaranteed at least a TF Rough mouse pad from Zowie. Guys, check out ZowieGear.com to uh, gaze over the prizes that our players will be receiving. Maybe find something for yourself as well. But we're going to get set up to our finals. It's going to be Clarity Gaming Shu versus Arthur. Tell your friends, tell your family, get them on the stream. This is going to be a great finals here in just a moment.